emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome to a new build series, yes, for emodels.co.uk, my good friends and sponsors. Yes, now, if you've seen the little announced trailer, you know what we're building, sort of. There have been some changes. For emodels, I am going to be building the following. The TACOM AML90 135th scale light armoured car, 5.5 tons of adorable death. It's dead cute. It's adorable. I like it. However, you know if you've watched the trailer that we're not just going to be building this as it comes out of the box, nor are we going to be building it to look like that because we have a load of extra bits. We are going to Warhammer this. You, if you know me and watch my videos, you know I've, I've suddenly fallen for things like Warhammer and stuff bigly. So, yeah. So, I did say in the original teaser video I was going to use some Space Marines for this. I'm not. Uh, I've also I also had some Astra Militarum Cadian Command Squad dudes lying around. I kind of thought about it for a while and thought this would be a better fit for grunt dudes in uniform type soldiers with normal weapons. Normal people, not super soldiers with space armour. So I figured these might be a better fit. So I've got a pack of these guys, which is kind of cool. I won't use all of them, but you've got a bloke with his Vox caster, his radio thing. You've got a bloke with a big gun that does something. Man with the flag. I don't know about the flag. Might not do the flag. It's tiny fiddly lettering. I might not be able to do that. Uh, a commander and a first aid guy. I might not use all of those, but we've got those. But that is not all. We also have a sprue of tank bits. Yeah, these are designed to go on your Bane Blade type tank, including, most importantly, a massive great big dozer blade. I like that. And that's not all. I also have ugh, all these bits, not that bit. All these bits, I, not that bit either, because that's a dude. I got myself, went onto the Ebays and got myself um, some packs of bits because I haven't got much of a bits box. I haven't got tons of stuff lying around. So I got myself some bits and these are all specifically things like uh, we have, well, a load of guys that go in tanks. <laughs> I'm gonna use maybe one of those. Um, a load of, what are these? Uh, weapons for tanks and armored vehicles. So lots of big cannons and bolters and flamers and las cannons and things like that. So we're gonna use some of those. Uh, we've got some Space Wolf bits, which I probably won't use. We have some uh, generically labelled Warhammer bits, which I won't use. And then we have lots of just random armoured vehicle parts, panels and cupolas or cupolas, uh, rails, handrails, towing hooks, spotlights, things like that. So loads of those. And we're going to basically get this puppy. We're going to build it straight from them. We're going to build it as it comes, more or less. So it's going to be, if you're, if you're not into Warhammer, don't panic. You're still going to have fun because we're still going to build this as normal. We're going to do this. We're going to do a diorama. I'm going to be able to show you some figure painting with these dudes. And we're going to customise this to have a more Warhammer look to fit with the figures and give it an interesting paint scheme that fits with Warhammer a bit more. So if you're interested in the armour side of it, the AFV side, stay tuned and watch because we'll still show you all the techniques I use on this will be all the techniques you can use on a normal armoured vehicle anyway. Doesn't really matter that it's made up Space Marine type figures. Just, just to pretend they're normal soldiers, doesn't matter. Everything I'll show you in this build is applicable to any kind of model building. I'm going to show you how to build this and paint it, how to make a diorama and how to paint figures because I've never really shown how to paint figures properly before on one of these e-model builds. And yeah, they're not realistic. They're not 135th scale. But I've said before, the, this vehicle is such that there's nothing on here that really gives away any kind of specific size other than the hatches on the top. And the beauty of these figures is, I've done a test, they kind of work, they kind of fit in the hatches and it looks kind of cool. And it has a kind of Warhammer look to it, it's just got that kind of look. Uh, oh, the other thing I'm going to be doing as well, and it's the first for me because I've not really used them before, uh, I'm going to be using the uh, Vallejo, oh, there's some Aquilas as well, uh, the Vallejo Game Colours. Uh, I've got a few here and I've got a load more on order from eModels. Uh, I'm going to be using the Vallejo Game Colours uh, because I want to be able to obviously brush paint the figures and there'll be some brush painting on the vehicle as well. Um, I 
traditionally use various paints. For my brush painting, I tend to stick with Citadel paints, but again, new models, we don't currently stock the Citadel stuff. So we're going to try the game cut. They're supposed to be really, really, really good. So we're going to check those out. I say I've got some more on order. We're probably going to use a couple of um, the metallics from the Ammo by MIG range, again, available at e models. And there will be a couple of cases where I do use a couple of Citadel paints. Uh, purely because, especially for things like painting the skin, purely because I'm not the best person in the world at painting figures. So it's always a challenge for me and I'd rather stick with the paints that I know how to use and get a decent result than try something new and make a mess of it at this point for this video. So I have got some of the flesh tones here but I'm going to stick with those with some of the colours that I already know. Plus there's one or two colours that I just haven't found in the game colour range yet that are about what I want. So one or two colours I might use from the Citadel range. But other than that we're going to try these out. So that's really long-winded and we've done nothing. Let me go and get everything ready. Okay, so let's get going. Now, before we do actually get going, I just need to explain, for those of you out there who know what you're doing with models, you've made models before, I am gonna cover a lot of ground that you probably no doubt already know. The, the real sort of starter stuff like how to make the model, you know, what sprues are, getting parts of sprues, things like that. I always tailor my videos, if you've watched my stuff, I always tailor them to the absolute beginner who maybe hasn't made a model before or has maybe made a handful of models and wants to step up the game and start doing a real good job. So I will tailor this to the absolute beginner. So we are going to cover stuff that a lot of you probably already know, but stick with it. I'll try and make it fun and interesting anyway. At some point, I'll probably trip over my own words and make an idiot of myself. So this is always amusing. <sighs> so let's go quickly through what you need assuming you've never built a model before this is your first model what do you need well obviously you need the kit itself you need the instructions and the first thing you want to do when you open the box is in most kits nowadays in the destructions it will have a sprue list a list of all the parts in the kit and it's always common sense although i've never ever come across a kit with a missing sprue or part i've occasionally had a missing part but very rarely ever i've never ever come across a missing sprue just go through the kit and check that you've got all the right sprues and all the right parts uh, this, ba -da -ba -da, this is a sprue. Now you may also hear it called a tree. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Sprue, a tree. The way this works is you have a framework in plastic and all the parts are on these frameworks, sprues or trees. They're all attached by little gates. And your basic task at this point is to get all the parts off and assemble them as per the instructions. Uh, the sprues, depending on the manufacturer, they always have a little flag on them somewhere with the sprue name. And it's either a letter or a number, imprinted or stamped or whatever. Uh, and each piece is numbered. Uh, so the way it basically works is this is sprue H. And the parts have little numbers here. So that's part 7, that's part 6, that's part 5. So that's H7, H6, H5. And if you go through the instructions, you see in the instructions, all the parts are numbered H13, E41, H16. That's how it basically works. So the instructions are going to call out, you need this part number on this sprue. So this is your sprue. So obviously you make sure you've got all the sprues. Then you want to go through the instructions and just familiarize yourself with them. Just have a look through, read through, just quickly check what you're going to have to be doing. It's at this point, as you get more experienced, you start to go through and start planning what you're going to paint and when like you might see a particular bit and say well i want to assemble something like for example i want to paint the interior so let's say there's an interior on this vehicle it might show that you put this bit on but you'd be like well i need to paint the interior so i need to do all that before i glue this bit on the top so you start to get a plan of your what's called the build order or the paint order most kits like this you can build it completely and then just paint it it doesn't matter but there are kits if you're building something with an interior for example or there's parts that are going to be really hard to get to once they're all assembled that you might want to keep to one side and paint separately before you attach them to the main model just to make painting easier so have a quick read through just familiarize yourself make sure you've got all the parts get in your mind the order of business are you going to have to keep anything as a sub assembly and then get yourself ready if it helps to make little notes do feel free i sometimes write all over the instructions when i finish a section i just scratch it out with a pen and then i know i don't need to go back if there's something i need to do later on let's say i don't want to glue this bit on now because i want to paint something and i can't do that i'll circle that and make a little note for myself so i know to go when i've finished i can go back and look at bits i need to do that i didn't do before so just a logical step so you've got your instructions what else do you need you need a model craft knife very very sharp 
Um, golden rule, when you start a new build, start with a new blade. Uh, you can get craft knives or a few quid and you can get packs. These are all replaceable blades. Now, this is a Swan Morton. It doesn't matter what craft knife you use, as long as you've got nice, sharp blades. And always keep the tip. Knife discipline. Don't do like me and stab yourself. With I'm known as Captain Stabberty. So always keep the top on when you're not using it. This is not going to be for taking parts off the sprue. This is going to be for cleaning up parts when you've got them off the sprue. You'll need some clippers, nippers, side cutters. Uh, they've got various different names and there's loads and loads of different brands. You need a good pair of, of model making part cutters, side cutters, nippers, whatever you want to call them. Um, I said there's loads of different types. To me, I do some really good ones. These are Citadel ones. There's loads and loads of different types. Don't just use what you might find in your tool drawer at home, like wire cutters or plier type things with the things for cutting wires. Don't use those. Why these kind of modelling things are designed with very fine straight blades, so they're designed to take pieces off sprues and cut pieces. If you go and get a pair of hardware snippers, they'll probably shear the plastic and rip it apart and you'll just get a mess. Make sure you get a nice pair of model making ones. Uh, if I remember rightly, models do have the Tamiya ones in stock. The Tamiya side cutters, they're very, very good. They're very, very good. Uh, you will need, you don't need, but some kind of um, seam line removal tool. Again, this is the Citadel one, but there are loads and loads available. Some of them look like little pieces of cut metal with holes and shapes in them. Some of them are tools like this. And this is basically, it's like a knife blade, and it's for removing seam lines where there's mold lines around the pieces. It's just a bit more efficient than a knife blade because it's stiffer and firmer. You can just use your knife blade, and we'll show that later. You can just use your knife blade. It just reduces wear and tear on your knife blade, and also it's a bit more controllable. You will need glue. Now, I'm going to use Tamir Extra Thin Cement. If you can get Tamir Extra Thin Cement, get it, because this is one of the best plastic cements there is. Uh, you'll see lots of different types of cement out there. There's stuff in tubes. Don't use those ever. Uh, there's stuff in little plastic bottles with very thin metal nozzles, like the Ravel stuff, the contactor glue that you can use. They're good plastic cements. The reason I like this one is because it's super, super thin. You get a very fine brush and it's designed for touching to a gap between two pieces. So it sucks into the gap and bonds the pieces together. There is a thicker cement that you might see me use as well for larger areas, but for the neatest cement job get yourself some Tamir extra thin uh, it's really really nice and this is what's known as a welding cement uh, it's not like don't use super glue and stuff like that there are uses for things like super glue but not for this kind of kit for most things this what this does it doesn't just it's not just glue that like super glue that goes between two pieces and holds them together this is a welding cement it actually melts the plastic together so if you've got two pieces and you put them like that together and then you glue them with this kind of welding cement, it melts the plastic and fuses it all together. So what you actually get is one piece of plastic, effectively. It just melts it all together into one piece. So it's not just a bond between two pieces, it's actually merged them together. It's a really strong bond, so get yourself some Camir Extra Thin. Uh, you will need some sanding sticks of various sizes. Uh, I've got the ultimate ones here, and these look really scruffy because I used my sanding sticks for a long time, and this was, I was, I was sanding something yellow, I think, when I did that, so it's kind of paint. Various different, these are the uh, ultimate sanding sticks you can get from your models. I've got some other ones as well. Um, they're all different sort of grits and softness, and I'll go through sanding grits at some point, I'm sure. So we've got a selection of them here anyway. You've got very, very fine for polishing. You've got a rough one for sanding flat nubs and things like that. And then you've got a medium one, which is just for cleaning up your work. So get yourself some sanding sticks. You can use sandpaper instead. I just find sanding sticks easier because they're squishy. They're kind of better for sanding round an uneven surface. So it can kind of, if you're sanding a curve, it, it sort of forms to the curve. If you use a solid sanding stick, you might sand it flat. And sandpaper's fine, but it's it's kind of lots of bits of paper lying around. Tweezers, get yourself some tweezers. Does, again, doesn't matter. Just get some real fine modeling. These are master tools. I think you can get from e-models as well. I got these from e-models. Uh, I find these useful for picking up small parts or for doing decals. The only thing with small parts is if you can avoid using tweezers to pick them up, do because they tend to ping off across the desk. So, and that's how you lose parts, but do get yourself some tweezers. And the last thing you'll need, at least at this stage, is what I call sprue goo. Now this is homemade. It's using Tamir Extra Thin and it's using bits of off-cut plastic or plastic card. Now, I won't go into what it's for now. Let me give it a good shake. I won't go into what it's for now because we'll cover this. When, I don't know if we'll need it on this kit. I think we will, but I'll cover it anyway at some point. 
but later on we'll show you about sprue glue and how you make it and how you use it it's better it's kind of better than using fillers so we'll, we'll play with that later and that's all the things you need so that's a quick look at what you'll need there's probably some other bits and bobs we might need and we'll as we come across those because i'm just planning ahead now as i come across those i'll let you know you might need masking tape you might need masking fluid uh, there is going to be some airbrush work in this by the way so you might need an airbrush for that bit but it's all stuff you could brush paint if you wanted to anyway i'll go and get ready and we'll start the build okay so let's get going now do the first step obviously because that's the first step uh, and for this we need one two three four five six seven parts so first thing to do is get all your parts ready uh, and for these we're going to need parts from the e sprue and the h sprue we're also going to need the lower hole which is not on a sprue at all so we've got the lower hole there uh, now it doesn't actually tell you what part that is it's brilliant this is the first thing to do in the book and it doesn't tell you which part it is hello that tells me straight away i need to pay careful attention to these instructions because if you miss that out there might be other bits they miss and i've done some research and there are a couple of bits in the instructions where they might trip you up so i'll try and spot those and let you know so but luck luckily this is an obviously identifiable piece so get your sprue cutters snips side cutters whatever you want to call them and all you do this is the gate here and this is the part now you can uh, if you've got very good sprue uh, snippers go straight up to the part and cut them but i tend to leave a little bit of the of the gate behind when i cut them off the sprue just because and i'll move these out of the way so you can see just because it's force of habit for me if they're very good snippers they will just give you a nice clean cut but depending on your snippers and how old they are and where who makes them um, you may find if you cut right against the part, kaplink like that on camera, kaplink, uh, they may, I'll see if these do, I don't know if this will do it, but see these give you a nice clean cut. You probably can't see on camera, but it's a little bit of sanding needed, but it's a nice clean cut. Some cutters, if the blades are a bit wonky or a bit old, it might pull the plastic and yank it. And what you risk doing then is actually taking plastic out of the part and you get a little divot where the plastic comes out. So good habit is to when you cut it off the sprue leave a little bit of the sprue behind and it's called the nub also be careful uh, double check the parts on the instructions when you're taking them off to make sure uh, that you're cutting off a bit of sprue and not a bit of the part so for example on these e41 and e41 there you go uh, let's have a look at what they look like e41 there now we're lucky move those again we're lucky here that those two hinges and not where the sprue attaches and sometimes when you build a model you might find the sprue attachment point is actually something that's sticking out <clears throat> there will be kits where for example you might have a, a piece of the sprue attaching here the gate will be on those hinges and you have to pay careful attention as to where the piece finishes and the sprue actually starts so just take your time cut these out slowly that one just came out by itself go around and get all the parts for the step okay so we have all the parts for this step on the sprue i actually got confused and this is why you need to pay attention to instructions i said it doesn't tell you which part this is it does there uh, this is a bit confusing because it's it's basically saying you need to do this bit first and then attach that there now in most model kits it would show you this bit first and then this bit but this is the other way around that's what confused me because i didn't realize this was that step so just goes to show even i get tripped up so pay attention to the instructions each panel make sure you read through it that's kind of not a logical way of doing it that's the first step that's the second step uh doesn't make sense to me but there you go so yes just pay attention to the instructions now we have our piece and you'll see here on the top of the piece we have the two nubs eins und zwei there we go two pieces um like i say it's always better to leave a little bit of a nub because you can clean that off you're not going to damage the plastic so how do we get rid of these nubs well you don't want to then go in with your trip with your nippers because you want to avoid the problem that you had which i said you don't want to damage the part so you go in with your brand new bladed modeling knife now if you're a younger builder you might want to get somebody a bit older to help you with this also i will do this in a particular direction i will do this towards myself if you can do it away from yourself for obvious reasons and all you do is very lightly do it on camera very lightly just start to shave that part away don't go right to the bottom of the nub straight away just start at the top and very gently 
shave. Go gently because if you push down really hard, the chances are you'll cut through it and into your thumb or you'll gouge the plastic. Keep the blade flat against the surface that you're working to clean up. And very quickly, you'll see the nub be gone. So we'll do this one. Okay, so that's all the nubs removed. You see, it's nice and smooth. If you feel it with your finger, it should be smoothish, but that one's gone. But I can still feel a couple of them as a little nub. Uh, now, you are in most cases, this will be a surface that gets glued together, or it's going to be something that's painted over, and you're not going to notice it. But what you want to do is just finish that off. So, you want to get yourself your sanding sticks, uh, and I'm going to start with the rough one and then go in with the medium one. Uh, and I could go in with the smooth one. Now, the way sanding works is um, sanding sticks and sanding paper have what's called grit. Grit tells you how rough they are. And the basic rule of thumb is they range from anything from 40 grit up to 6,000 grit or higher, 1,200 grit. The higher the number, the smoother and finer they are. So a 40 grit might be you know, rough like pebbles uh, and a 1,200 grit will be really smooth and just for finishing off and polishing. So the smaller the number, the, so the, the rougher it is. And the basic rule of thumb is that you start off with the rougher grit and then finish up with the smoother grit. So I'm going, I don't know what grit this is because these ultimate ones don't have it marked on the stick, but I'm going to guess it's maybe, I don't know, 200 grit, maybe 80 grit, something like that. It's a bit rough. You can feel, you can, you can hear it in the microphone. Uh, and what we do is very, very lightly uh, get the sanding stick horizontal and level with the edge I want to sand. And we'll just very gently, I can't really do it on camera that you can see it, but we'll very gently just run it along the edge. I'm not putting any pressure on. It's quite noisy. It's a bit quieter. Run it along. Try and go in one direction. And that's very little work. And I can now feel that that is smooth. If I wet my finger yeah, and do that, I don't see any any little bumps on there so that's done now this is a really small area so this next step isn't too important but i'm going to do it anyway once you've sanded with the rough grit with the low number uh, you go in with a medium grit so a higher number to smooth that off when you sand with anything rough it will put scratches and little marks into the plastic surface so what you do then is you go in with a higher grit number and same again just go over i'm not really putting any pressure on i don't need to there were tiny little blips i had to sand off Again, try and stay in one direction. And that now is smooth again. But what the medium grit does is it then takes away any scratches made by the rough grit and smooths those out. Now this will put its own, sand, its own sanding marks in there as well. So if you wanted to get really finickety, you could then go in with a polishing stick and do exactly the same again. Because this is even smoother. And then on the other side of the sanding stick, it's even smoother still. And that's just a, that's a, this is the buffing side. The white side is the polishing side. And by the end of it, what you have is a nice piece of shiny plastic with the nubs removed. Now, at this point in the build, you don't have to go through that many steps of sanding. This is going to be glued together and that's actually a contact surface, I think, anyway. So as long as you sand it smooth, so you can go in with the rough grit and then with the medium grit, you're probably going to be fine. You don't have to worry about polishing it up. If you're making a gumpler or something and you weren't going to paint it, then yes, you want to do that. But when it's this kind of thing, you don't really need to go that far ahead because you're going to put primer on this as well. So you don't need to worry about that really too much. It's up to you. I tend to just do the, the rough and the medium grit and that's fine then for when I prime it over. So I need to go around and do all the sand the other edges and on all the other parts I've still got to take the nubs off and clean them up so I'll go and get all that done and then we'll glue some stuff together yes okay so that's all our bits sanded down nicely now a couple of things to watch out for and um, when I was saying about paying attention if you look at the the lower hull although it doesn't come on a sprue and you'd be thinking well there's nothing worth sanding off there are a couple of little sort of attachment points under here where it's come out of the out of the mold so it's obviously attached to something 
Uh, now they're really tiny so they don't need to be cut with the knife you can just sand them so you can see i've sanded those down there are a few little sort of scratchy marks in there from the sanding but i'm not worried because i know from experience that's the kind of sort of very faint scratch marks that will get covered by the primer when i put it on so that's fine so make sure you sand those down one other thing you see here there's a little tiny nub it's not a nub it's actually part of the hole it needs to be there if you look in the instructions you can see it that's not a nub so if you ever see a little bit sticking up like that and you're thinking is that a nub do i need to shave that off just double check in the instructions that is meant to be there it's like a hinge or something i guess it's meant to be there uh, and the, the reason then that's quite ironic because when i was doing the doors for the front you've got the little sort of clasp here the little handle yeah i totally sanded that one off because i wasn't paying attention <laughs> yeah it doesn't doesn't matter so just pay attention when you're sanding stuff off make sure when you're sanding a nub off that it's actually a nub <sighs> right let's get some gluing done so we have our doors these should just neatly fit in the the hinges should go onto these little hinge parts here they should just sit into place like that you've got two little hinges and they just sit around you might find some little bits of flash which is just excess plastic from the molding process on those hinges just scrape it off with a knife blade so that's on so what we need to do now if you were to use tube glue or glue from the plastic like the Revell contactor with the long metal tube you'd be putting a little dot of glue in there and it'd be going everywhere with the extra thin all you do is dead simple the, the, the lid has a brush on it and all you do is run a little bit of the glue oh that's quite a lot of bit of the glue you run the glue around the edge and that is now fixed in place uh, if you want to put a little bit on the hinges you can do just touch it to it and that will be enough give it about five minutes that should dry and that will be enough to glue that in place this is why i like the extra thin glue two reasons one you can use a lot less and it doesn't make a mess see there when that dries you'll be able to see a bit of a change in the shininess but it won't leave lumps when the when the carrier fluid in this glue flashes off i don't know what it's made of i can't remember the exact name of it but when it flashes off it'll have welded the plastic but the glue itself will flash away and evaporate so it may leave a rough texture where it's melted the surface of the plastic but it's not going to leave blobs of glue unless you put a ton on and you don't want to put a ton on and so that's why i love this glue it's a very very neat and tidy glue and it's just really nice for not making a mess so if I get that on there, it's not quite in properly. Come on, get in. I have to kind of push it in a little bit to make it conform. Conform. There we go. Click and it goes into place. So again, I'll just run some glue around it. And I'm just touching it to the edge. Basically what I'm doing is I'm allowing... Th this glue depends on capillary action. If you don't know what that means means when i put it to a gap between two parts like i said before it sucks into that gap it was shoom. same same way you know liquids go up straws and along panel lines it sucks in um and it just goes into where you can't get it to you don't have to slap it everywhere uh, the only thing i would say is when you're doing this as soon as you've put the glue on put the lid back on the glue and close it it's got a very strong smell uh, and you can end up getting this giving yourself a nasty headache if you sit there for five or six hours gluing stuff away and the jars constantly open and you might stink the room out so always make sure you're putting the lid back on screw it back on as soon as you've finished applying it take it off you'll see me unscrew it apply some glue and screw it back on again so always make sure you do that just to keep the fumes away and i would say if you're gluing lots of things together again if you're a beginner you might not know this if you're gluing lots of things together and you're using the extra thin then take breaks don't work for more than half an hour with this stuff before you take a five minute break and just go outside and get some air or go downstairs and have a coffee or get some something to eat just take regular breaks taking your time building these things is not a problem uh, so i need to go and glue the, these are the two bits on that bit's just pinged there it is Whew, pinged it i don't know where it gone uh, this bit needs to latch onto here there's two little recesses in there and the little hooks on here need to go into there now it's a bit fiddly so i might have to do this off camera uh, one other thing to do as well before you glue things in place just do dry fitting and that just means putting the piece in without glue so you can understand how it all goes together so you can then plan how you're going to glue it you see this is quite fiddly and if i started gluing this and dumping bits everywhere i'd have a nightmare 
So what I might do, I've just dry fitted it now, I'll put a little bit of glue on here. And I'm going to try and get this in place. You've got, a, you've got a, you know, a minute or so while the glue is still curing. This might not work because I've got cack hands today. Oh, I can't pick that. Oh, do you know? Put my finger all over it. I'm a bit cack handed today, so yeah, not ideal for tiny parts. I'll try and lower it in place. Go on, go on, get in, get in, my son, get in. Oh, do you know? It's not cooperating. You will get parts like this. Yeah. Always when you're doing it on camera as well. Yeah, right. What? Yeah, I'll do that bit off camera. I'll do that bit off camera. That'll go on. Don't worry, it'll work. Right, right. So I'll go and fight with this bit. Then we'll do the next bit. Uh, now, during the build, I may not show everything. Uh, just so you know, I don't want 13 episodes of how to build this thing. Um, it may just be that I show a few bits of building and I just show bits where it's something tricky you need to know about uh, And for the rest of it, I'll just go ahead and build it So we might not show everything it might just be in this episode I don't know yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out So I'll do the build and if I find anything interesting that I think you need to know about we'll come along So I'll go and get these bits done and crack on and then we'll see uh, we'll get to the next step Which any well the next step that you might need to know about anything tricky or where you need to really be careful I'll probably highlight so back in a moment Right, you. You're going on here, and you're going on here well. You will attack. You will attach. I will have my way. I will have my. Oh. Right, going home. Going home now. Okay, just a quickie heads up. I've moved on a little bit. Managed to get this little piece on. Yes. Uh, I put in the exhaust system here. Now, what you'll see is there are two little pieces on the side here. And here these attach to this piece uh, and they kind of slot in but they're not they're a bit wibbly wobbly and what they have to do is when you come to later on in the build they have to line up and hide inside these little bits here on the back of the mud guard so what I would recommend you do is when you've got this on and glued in place before it all sets just put this piece over the top and make sure it all lines up just loosely put it on top make sure it all lines up Get them glued in place and then leave it for a good 10 minutes just for all the glue to cure so they should be in just the right place so that when you put this on in the end if you need to you can push them up a little bit but they won't be hanging down too low they need to go out at a certain angle from the side but it's impossible to know at this point what the right angle is unless you get the top of the hull and put it on there and see so just loosely fit the top of the hull on and make sure those are in the right place uh, the other thing you need to know is this is the sort of the rear of the vehicle the rear panel you've got this big two dotting chunks sticking out you need to cut those off because they're not actually part of the kit they're just bits of extra plastic so all you need to do is get those and just snip them off sand them down a bit otherwise it won't fit on so just so you know those are flash i'll go and crack on Okay, it's coming along slowly. Uh, like I said before, I'm not going to sort of show you every step of the build because that will be, frankly, a really boring video for you to watch uh, of me just sticking things to other things. It's fairly straightforward in the instructions, but there are a couple of things I want to point out, and I've stopped here because I want to show you some things. First of all, you can see I've put the housings in for the headlights. I've not put the clear parts in here. Don't do that. Don't glue those clear parts in. Gluing the clear parts in will be one of the last things you do after you've painted and weathered everything, so don't put those in yet. What else did we do? Uh, there was. I've put the start of the suspension at the back, and all the back is in now. And this, I've got to do this side. I've noticed a trend with these Tacom kits. Every now and then, you get a part that has minimal connection points, so there's a lot of freedom to get it in the wrong place. But you're expected to get it exactly right for bits that go on it later on, like these bits of the. I assume this is the exhaust system or whatever that is. These parts here, they've got to be in the right place. Now these have got some flex to them, so I'm fine with those. The shock absorber here, you've got one attachment point down the bottom and then nothing else. And there's a bit that connects to this from here, from the, the axle system here. So all I can do is hope that this all lines up. If not, I might have to bodge something. So there does seem to be a little bit of faith involved with these kits. The, you know, if they put a peg on the side here that goes into this back bit, that would have been really handy. But they don't. So just be careful. Go steady. A couple of other things. Uh... When you do the side doors, this one and this one that goes on that side, 
you'll see when you get it off the sprue there's two great big honking chunks of plastic here these are actually just bits of sprue so you want to snip those off because you've got a hinge there that go that locks in to that hinge part there so just make sure you snip those off they're on there because they can't kind of probably mold that as it is they have to go oh, crud on the end of my tweezers um, you can't mold that as it is. You probably have to mold it as the whole unit. So that's why you've got those bits of blob on the end. Uh, also, interesting little thing. Uh, you are required to glue in four of these little tiny parts. Now, what these do, these are part, uh, what are they? E10. These are actually designed on the real vehicle. They sit above the wheels and the axles. And they're designed to be halts so when the wheel goes up it only goes so far these things stop it going too fast so the wheel can't plow into the upper frame of the vehicle i think i think i could be wrong but i think that's what they are um, however you've got four of them on the sprue and you're supposed to attach four the instructions only tell you to do two when you read through the instructions it'll tell you here let me get some tweezers it says here attach e10 there which is fine, that's no problem. Um, and then on the next page, it says attach E10 there. If you look at the instructions, E10's already in place on both sides at the back. It doesn't actually say anywhere to add that. So this is why I'm saying pay attention to the instructions. These TACOM kits sometimes miss bits out. So they've kind of put that bit in there, but forgotten to actually say you need to glue. That should be like out here saying glue this in. So you do have one at the front and one at the back, but the instructions don't tell you that. So just, just keep an eye on the instructions as you're going through. I'll point out any more little bloopers that I come across. Um, I mean, they are very nice instructions, don't get me wrong. They're really nicely done. But a lot of kits have things like that in instructions. It's not uncommon to find glitches in instructions. So it's always worth paying attention. Um, other than that, I've had no other problems so far. Very fiddly, quite fiddly to build. Uh, it's a simple build, but not as simple as you think. So I'll go and crack on, we'll carry on. And should anything else pop up that I need to show you, I will do so. Otherwise, I'll come back with the finished lower hull. Let's crack on. Okay, pausing times. There's a couple of steps I need to show you. But before I do, uh, a word of warning here. Like many of these TACOM kits, like I said before, the steps you have to do on faith that they'll fit later on when other things go on. Yeah, when you first build in this and you put in this back panel in, now I have to say that does kind of remind me of the 1989 Batmobile, which is the best Batmobile, I have to tell you, it's the best one. It has that kind of, anyway, yes. When you put in this back panel in, when I glued this panel on here, I've just noticed when I was doing something else, there's a gap there. Now it fits perfectly with here, so I'm guessing this panel was too far that way. I didn't know that because this panel goes on quite a way after this panel. You don't do them at the same time, not straight away. In my case, it was about three hours later. So this was already glued in place. What you want to do when you get this panel on is have this panel ready and just dry fit it so you can make sure this panel is pushed all the way forward. The reason I'm telling you this now, and the only reason I've discovered it so late, is I was doing a dry fit with the top piece of the lower hole, the upper sort of top piece I don't know what the phrase is anyway I put this in and this was like that it was up here it just didn't fit it was like what the heck basically this sort of chamfered edge here which you can't see this bit here was catching on this edge of the back plate here because it was too far that way and there is a little channel down the side where that slots in so what I had to do, and it was too late to fix it, so what I had to do was get myself a metal file, not one of the spongy files or sandpaper, because I need this to be a solid flat edge. And I just filed it like that, filed it away at the edge, kept it straight, and I filed it evenly, moving along backwards and forwards, until I'd flattened it down and made it less stick out that way. And now, thankfully, because I assumed that was the problem, now thankfully it does actually fit a lot better. It's still not perfect, and I think this is just the way the kit goes together. So when we come to assemble this, we will need to clamp or tape these in place. Now they do have a slight angle to them there. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be like that, not like that, but we'll, we'll figure something out. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming those gaps down there are actually intentional. 
I've looked at the artwork on the box and I can't quite tell but it seems to be they do overhang so like little rooftops so yeah so I've, anyway I've um I've had to make those adjustments I also snipped the end off here of these little tubes at the side purely because I'm not doing an accurate model so it doesn't really matter for me but they were just getting in the way and, and pushing this up and I didn't want anything because this was not fitting properly so I just snipped off the very ends again I'm not making the real thing so I'm not particularly fussed uh, so but if you're making this as a real world version then just make sure you've got this panel ready get this in place with some glue dry fit this and push this panel that way this whole panel forward till it pushes in place and seals that gap because then you'll know it's far enough back and you're not going to get any pain in the bum fit issues <sighs> so but that's say the problem was this piece wasn't due to be attached until after i finished this piece and I actually went to be tea so yeah <sighs> right so anyway where are we up to so we've got through to step uh seven eight and nine i've done step seven uh, now this is where this is where their instruction layout gets a bit confusing step seven step eight step nine which in itself is a kind of weird order to do it but never mind don't actually do it this way what you do is you do step seven then you do this bit then you do step eight and then you do step nine yeah they need to work on their layout a little bit or at least have like other manufacturers may have this as a speech bubble so you can see it's a subsection of that. I mean, it's fairly obvious. Look at it and say, oh, I haven't built those yet because that's this bit. But it would be kind of handy. They are labelled as A, B, C, D and they're A, B, C. So it's just, just be, a, be aware of that. So I thought I'd stop and show you this bit because this bit is all tiny, 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 tiny microscopic parts. These are all molecules of plastic. Uh, and I'm going to show you this bit because it involves a heated screwdriver. But this bit is a little bit fiddly. Or at least it looks a little bit fiddly, but it's not actually that bad. Uh, so I'm going to film, fill, I thought I'd try and film this. Now there's uh, four of the main, I don't know what you call these bits. They're not drive things with the, the bit the wheel goes on, the hub, I don't know, maybe the hub. Uh, there's four main hubs and there's two extra bits that go on the front to link up the, the steering linkage. Uh, and all you're doing is basically assembling these. Now true to tack on kits, instead of like, if this was to me a kit from 30 years ago, they just give you that piece and they glue it on and then it's a wheel and then done, you're built. This one, they give you like 400 components for each bit. And uh, it's one of the one of the plus side of tack on kits is what for other manufacturers might be a really simple build, they'll make as much of it constructible. So if you like your building, you're gonna get lots of mileage. Anyway, let's do this bit. So we're making B here, you see, uh, B. There's four parts. Uh, I've got all these parts off the spruce and trimmed them, and this is dead simple. And this is where the extra thin glue comes in super, super handy. <sighs> now, you need to make sure you do this. What I'm doing is I'm building one of these and then sticking it onto the chassis, onto the, the hull, because I don't want to get the wrong one in the wrong place. So do it step by step. Do step A, glue it on where it tells you to glue step A on. Do step B, glue it on do step C glue it on and so on so that way you're not going to make any screw ups and get the wrong thing in the wrong place so I've got to try and do this from a mile away so we start with G27 and I don't know how useful this will be because I don't know how much you'll actually see of this because it'll mostly be my fingers in the way so we have G27 which is that way around also I'm going to knock the camera with my headset so G27 is there E30 now pay attention to E30 you want a hole there the sticky out bit and this bit no hole so you've got no hole and the tab with the hole and again I don't know how much you'll see of this because it's a mile away this tab has a small notch cut out of it and that needs to line up with the notch here needs to line up is that the right one no that's the wrong one ah Yes, you've got to make sure you get the right one. Ooh, hang on. So you need to have it so that there's a blank and then a hole with the bit at the top. So it's that way around. And that needs to be like that. That goes on there. Get on. Get on! B, get on. B. Oh. Right, so there we go. So that's on. Now what you'll find is, if you get it the wrong way around, 
that nub on this end that's on the other side of that on this side is smaller oops on this side is smaller so if you try and put that bit in there it's just going to flop around like it did a moment ago so you want to use the end that actually locks into place so that is there like that i think that's right and apologies if i'm locking the camera i've got my visor on so so what i'm going to do is get my extra thin glue i'm not going to glue it in there because i don't know what has to go on in there so i'm actually just going to run the glue around the edge like that that should suck inside and glue that into place nicely Okay, next we have this little rod, which you probably can't see. Tiny rod. Uh, and there's two ends. There's a, a round end here. And the other end is like a bolt. It's got like a flange on each end. This is the outside end. So this end is that bit there. So the end that's just round needs to attach into that hole at the top there. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to grab that in our tweezers very carefully. We're going to get a little bit of glue on the inside of the part in the little recess. And then I'm just going to drop it in like that. Put it in with my thumb and then it'll fall out. So I'll just put it in with my thumb instead then, shall we? There we go. Just going to glue it there. It is fiddly, but it's not impossible. Although it's going to make a fool of me and a liar of me on camera. So that is almost in. Just hold it for a second. Give it a second just for the glue to tack, and then it'll have a bit of grip, and then just get some glue on there, like that. And then last of all, we have the end cap, which if you look at the thing here, has a notch at the top and I need that notch at the top so that informs you which way around this goes so that just goes on like that that's a, not as tight a grip as the other one so what I need to do is hold it with my hand touch of glue touch of glue on that little dingle arm or whatever you call it parametric fan if you get those references jolly good so there we have it so that is now built now on the instructions here this just looks like a cone it doesn't show this tab at the bottom there's a little you might see a little tab there at the bottom it doesn't show that because it's out of view so that's how you know you've got it in the right place because that tab should be at the bottom this little arm should line up uh, and you've got the notch cut out of the the hole to make sure you can't get it wrong so that is done it's not that complicated and don't forget of course i'm trying to do this on camera with a headset that keeps knocking the camera so i've got to scrunch down and do it from a long way away if you're doing this for realsies and you sat at your desk you can just do it in like 10 seconds it's not hard it looks really you think oh my god look at all this complicated nonsense it's not it's not hard at all dead easy and all you need to do is now you've done step uh, uh b let me just get my pen of pens I've done step B, that is done, so I now need to go and apply it to the vehicle, and the vehicle tells me that step B is here, and it goes on there, lovely, there's lovely. Okie dokie, and we've moved ahead quite a bit now, I said I wasn't going to show you everything, a lot of it's just sticking bits to other bits, so it's not hard. Um, right, so, I've got to the point now where I've done basically everything I need to do at this point from this kit. Um, I've attached all the things I can attach and I need to get started now on the actual custom bit So we're going to do that in the next episode. So we're going to wrap this episode up. But let's go through what we've done uh, I was going to show you this bit of the suspension where you put that pin there through this rod uh, And you do it with a heated screwdriver as per the instructions. However I ended up with the wheel just being glued in place anyway with this bit. So it's not going to turn. It's not going to move. There's no point worrying about it. So I just put it in place and glued it. I didn't hot, hot screwdriver it in the end. I can't actually see the way this went together. I don't really understand how the wheel would actually turn. This bit in the middle doesn't really seem to serve much of a purpose. So I don't really, I couldn't figure out the mechanics of how that would actually turn. So yeah. Um, the shock absorbers. They do line up with a little sort of plate on the back of the hub. On the back though, yeah, they didn't line up at all because I had them in the wrong place. 
So if you are making this, have this made and ready when you glue in the springs and either just glue the wheel in that you can do it earlier on if you want glue this in place all together and have the spring in the right place or just have it ready to dry fit and make sure the spring is in the right place it actually needs to be at a slight angle if you can see there it doesn't quite meet the hub I mean, it's not the end of the world i don't particularly mind it's gonna have a wheel in front of me covered in mud anyway so i'm not really bothered but yeah it's another like i said before it's all about those putting things in and then having to hope they're in the right place because you've got stuff to do later so word of advice if you're building this to be as realistic as possible have this built and ready and do this and this at the same time it doesn't make any difference to the rest of the kit you don't need to do that so late uh i've got all the sides on obviously put on a few little details i've got the axe and the rod here i put in the little viewing ports uh, i have added these spindly as heck wing mirrors now i don't believe that these will survive this build at all at some point i will just grab it and snap them off it's like a thinner than the width of a human hair it's like a molecule thick that little bit there now you might ask why did i put them on now because there's no peg and hole it's just put them into the right place and glue them and hold them there for a minute there's a bit of glue required for that and if i'd painted this it would have made a right mess of the paint job so because you can't you can't have painted parts glued together you have to scrape the paint off so the plastic can grip so yeah that would have just made a right mess of the paint job if it had been painted up so i'd rather do them now see if they survive the build process if one of them should snap off i'll just take the other one off and i'll just sand it down and they won't be there i mean they're not particularly warhammery anyway i think if they don't fall off during the building they'll definitely fall off during the painting but we'll see they might survive you never know uh and other bits and bobs added on to the hole it's just the bits stuck on the surface so that's done i built two wheels four main wheels uh, and the spare wheel hub so the normal wheels themselves uh, you've got two for the front and two for the back I forget which are which but they have different connection points uh do they have different connection points uh one the back one i think this is the back one just has a circular hub center and this one has a, no that's the front one has a sort of cut off circle and that one has a circle you can't get them wrong you can't get them mixed up you can build them all at the same time and it doesn't actually matter they all share the same components the only difference being the back plate so you get two of each and you get a spare wheel hub which is designed to go on the three pins on the door here now what you will need to do is widen these three holes that those three pins go into and all you do is get your craft knife your modeling knife get it in the hole and just gently turn the knife and that will widen the hole you don't need to use a drill or anything like that uh, if you don't do that they won't go in the, the little nubs that stick out on the door are far too big for the holes so just widen those holes a little bit and you'll have three little things that will lock on there then so the wheels done uh, i've tried them out in the tires i did watch one video where a guy was making this and he had the back he had the hubs were too wide for the wheels so we had to push it to the back hub sort of side stuck out from the tire but he said you know it doesn't matter because you're not going to see it anyway i didn't have that problem so i don't know what he was doing these glue together I, again because i couldn't see how the turning mechanism works in these wheels i couldn't really get my brain to visualize how it turns and i don't really care anyway it's going to go off on a static diorama I just glued all this together again I, I don't really care about the wheels turning i'm not bothered at all so there you go uh, i also prepared the uh, the upper hole the turret uh, now i've not glued in the floor yet but what i have glued in is the the part for the cannon now on the kit obviously it's a 90 mil cannon i've made some adjustments first of all i've just glued it all in in the proper build you just glue these two side parts this piece moves up and down and this plate glues onto the front and you'll have the main gun which will glue to this little stud uh, which is this part at the back and you'll have a hole here for the machine gun that goes in the side this hole has a raised area around it i've sanded that down and i've also i've not yet but what i will be doing is cutting this sort of tab off i say it's just part of this bit and this slides over the top i've just not cut it off yet because i wanted to make sure it was glued in place and it's all just glued in place everywhere so it can't move uh, I did do some loose fitting while it was setting to make sure it fits and it does uh, so we this is where we will attach our non real world weapon to the front so I'll be needing to cut that little nub off but I need it all to set in place so that's where we're up to that's all those bits done as I say I've stopped because right now next thing we need to start doing is adding the custom parts now there are a lot of little greebles and bits and things that I haven't stuck on your little squares and blocks and sticky up things and aerials and doohickeys that go all over the surface of the vehicle that i haven't yet glued on um 
The reason is, I want to get the Warhammer stuff on there first. Now, once that's on, I'll see what else of the real vehicle kit I can put on there. There may be some Warhammer bits that replace real vehicle bits anyway. Like, as an aerial, I'm going to use from the Warhammer set that replaces any kind of whip antenna on here. Uh, so I've got a tray of bits, lots of different bits, and I have the weapon for the main cannon. Um, I did some research trying to find out what the heck this thing is. I think it's a twin-linked auto cannon. I don't. It's really hard if you know what something looks like, but you don't know what weapon it is. Finding out what it is, yeah, it's not that easy. So I think it's a twin-linked auto cannon. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But we're going to do that in the next episode. We're going to look at the custom parts, and it's basically just gluing stuff on from other kits. It's a bit of a kit bash. You could do this. You have to use Warhammer stuff. You can do this with other tank parts or bits from anything really it's something that model makers have done for many 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 years just kit bashing just gluing one thing from onto something else completely and seeing what comes out so that's gonna be really good fun gonna looking forward to that but it's gonna do it for this episode this has been the boring building episode so apologies the next one will get a bit more interesting and then we'll get into the painting and weathering then so stick with it stick with it but i hope this has been some slight use like i said i just wanted to point out some bits not show every single part of the build process as always of course do go and check out your models.co.uk the uk's leading online model retailer uh, they've got so much stuff it's unbelievable they carry everything you need models kits you know kits themselves paints tools brushes books guides they even do remote control stuff. Go and check them out. There's a massive stock in there. And as we always say, uh, if they haven't got it, you don't need it. If there is something specific you're looking for and you can't find it, it's either just temporarily out of stock, so drop them an email and they'll let you know when it's back in, or it's possibly something they don't carry, they don't normally sell, but drop them an email anyway. It's most likely something they can get hold of, even if it's something they don't normally stock. So do give them a shout. They can always check with their distributors and see if they can get one for you. So whether if whatever it is, drop them an email, ask a question, they'll be happy to reply and let you know what's going on. They'll always do the best for you, so go and check it out. Just as an update of as filming this, the two things, if you like your big, massive, impressive models, do go and check out the Tamiya 116th scale uh, Abrams tank, fully remote controlled, is in stock. That thing is a beast. If I could have one, I would have one, but I'm not going to have one here. Uh, and also, back in stock, uh, they have one of the incredible 135th scale Dora rail guns. Now, those things are long discontinued. They've stopped making them years ago, but they've managed to find one untouched. So, if you've been jonesing to get one of those for yourself, because it's a beast of a model, and it's just it's so incredible. They only made a limited number of them. There's not many of them around the world. So, if you've been jonesing to get one, you've not been able to find one, Go and check it out. Go and have a look. Uh, they've got one. Don't know how long they have it. By the time you watch this, it may have gone. But go and check it out. It is something unique. And there's so few of them in the world. Once you've got it, it's just something to be proud of. So go and check it out. As always, don't forget to check out the Monday live show. Mondays, 9pm GMT. Myself, Ted and Chris do the eModels live show where we just answer your questions about model making. We try and talk about model making. We generally don't. We just talk about like the 1980s and have a laugh and respond to people in chat. So you can watch that on the eModels YouTube page here or you can go to eModels.co.uk forward slash live and watch it there. But if you want to join in the live chat and win prizes, we usually have giveaways and stickers and mugs and kits. Come and watch it. It's brilliant. It's great fun. It's great fun. <clears throat> anyway, that's going to do me. I need to go away and drink lots of coffee now. Um, get a bit of a sore throat as well. Uh, so I might possibly be a bit raspy in the next episode. I don't know. It's because I talk too much. I can't shut up. I can't just do simple talking. I can't say, Here is a thing. Here is another thing. Do this. No, that's 15 minutes of dialogue I need to do for that. It's just, I'm doing it now. Oh, right, I need coffee. Anyway, yes. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, take care of yourselves. Thank you for watching. Adios, amoebas.